just uh, really exciting to have a man. So we wanted to have a webinar with him on, and we'll have some of the other uh, major speakers speak in the next couple of months. Uh, January 23 through 25 is our homecoming. It's an annual event. Uh, we're already up to approaching 100 people. Last year we had 200, and it was just incredible. Uh, Dr. Merkel is one of the stars, and uh, he's back this year by popular demand, as I said, and we're going to talk about some of the things we'll just glance over tonight. We'll get into great detail. Uh, of course, Dr. Brett there, myself, uh, Dr. Um, John Craig, who's never been on with us before, and we hate to tell you this, but we have four millionaires speaking out of the eight this year, uh, so people can realize you still can make money even in this economy. Dr. Craig is one, uh, does orthotics and extremity situation. Uh, Brandy's not a millionaire yet, but she's working on it. She'll be speaking and being you up to date on all the ICD-10s that are coming around the corner, all the new billing and coding and compliance issues. Dr. Brett, my son, will we'll be talking on neurology and cranial and uh, be doing all the six-step protocol. I am a millionaire, except personally still, and I'll be covering on how we uh, have created that million-dollar practice and continue to maintain that concept. Uh, Dr. Kramer, Kramer is, will be on board, and he is a, does a million dollars every year, and he teaches clients how to do that, so he'll be on board talking about what you do in your practice to hold the, the message and to create the practice of your dreams, so he'll be able to do that. We have Cheryl Burdett, which needs no introduction. She's one of the uh, highly recognized nature paths and lectures for Zyman all over. She's incredible. I don't know if she's a millionaire or not, but she's not. She probably, or at least hasn't told me, but she probably is. As hard as she works, she deserves to be. And then we have Jesse Liebman, who uh, did about a million and a half this last year in chiropractic and also does body contouring. Uh, Dr. Brett's doing body contouring. So we're going to talk about that and, and how you can help the posture of a patient improve their health, detoxify them, and help them get a lot better posture as well. So that's just a, a glimpse of a few of the doctors who will be speaking. I don't want to take any time away from, from uh, Dr. Merkel, so I'm going to uh, turn it over to you. Uh, I might talk about the specials here a little bit, and from that, why don't we turn it right over to Dr. Merkel and go a hard and fast hour. Absolutely. Well, well said, Dr. John. So just before we kick it off here and have Dr. Van Merkel uh, give his excellent presentation on lab interpretation and blood work, I want to let you all know about a great special you can take advantage of. So this expires uh, at the end of the, uh, on Monday actually, so 20% off a lot of the bioenergics formulas. And please use this SP code, it's SPWeb in the date today, so 10-21-14. So Dr. Van Merkel, I did pass it over to you. You should see a pop-up that says, uh, is it okay to share my screen? Just click OK. And we're good to go. Can you see my screen all right? I cannot. It's coming up. Uh, there we go. There we go. Just out. All right. All right. Well, I'm okay. going to get myself good. out and turn it over to you, boss. Hey, thank you, Dr. Brim Hall. It's an honor to be with you all today. And thank you, Dr. Brim Hall, for inviting me and for signing for putting this on. Taking the time to do that. Um, we're, we're, we're getting a little feedback from somebody there. Hopefully, that'll take. All right, I got a good. Um, lab values have changed. I've been doing lab work for, for about 30 years. And my nature is I always like to see trends and how things are moving. And, and values are changing, um, have, and some have changed dramatically. And that's what I'm going to review today and show you some of that. Um, in fact, Lab Corporation of America releases updated lab ranges nearly every month. And uh, we have contracts with LabCorp and Quest where we have uh, discounted price and co-op. And we have to update our computer system because they're making changes. And the two largest labs in the country are Lab Corporation of America and Quest Diagnostics. And uh, we use both of those as, uh, whenever it's needed. Now, years ago I noticed that, that the changes were being made. And some of them were quite noticeable, um, quite significant. And I asked my lab rep, well, why are they making these changes? Well, he said most of the changes are based on population averages. So as I explain when I'm, when I'm doing my, my radio show, I'll explain. If you have a blood test from 10 to 50, and the, the range is 10 to 50, whatever the test is, a, a regular doctor, a medical doctor, would see a problem when? When it's 9 or lower or 50 or higher. Does that mean you're healthy at 10 or 11 or 48 or 49? I think we'd all agree no. And so we try and get that optimal healthy range, which I'm not really going to talk about that today. But what I, but what I explain is some of these tests instead of 10 to 50, 
over the years have dropped down to 5 or up to 65. So instead of 10 to 50 as being the clinical range, in some cases down to 5 or up to 65. So truly, test values that are considered normal today would have been pathological just a few years ago. And we're going to show you some of those uh, coming up here in just a minute. But here's a very important slide. Because a lab value is now common based on population averages, it is considered normal and accepted as healthy. Disease is now the accepted normal. Now, if you're a new doctor or have not been paying attention, you'll be shocked what lab ranges are, are now compared to a few years ago. And it'd be very difficult to remember and monitor and manage all these labs and lab changes and data without a good system in place, without a good computerized system. And you guys all know this, but in the last hundred years, there has been a tremendous volume of knowledge of the human body has been produced. It's disease process and the treatment of main disease processes using alternative natural care, including dietary modification, vitamin, and nutrient supplementation. It is not possible for any individual practitioner to remember all the enlightened levels and relationships and variables of the different tests, as well as interpret the meaning of all the relationships and variables of the different tests that are available with current medical testing technology. Don't feel bad. Nobody can remember it all. I mean, this is most of my practice is lab testing, and I can't remember them all. And there's now a computerized system that incorporates lab back, use hair, urine, blood, and other tests that are numerical in nature. It includes patient symptoms, medications, and vials to analyze the blood in consideration of those factors leading to a medical and nutritional evaluation or diagnosis. It's presented in an easy-to-read color-coded report that is patient-specific. And Dr. Friendly will include a color-coded report, diet modifications, and nutrient recommendations with specific doses of those nutrients, all based on patient testing. I'm going to show you a sample report um, in just a few minutes. But um, what I want to show you, um, and, I, and I'm zipping through this real quick, is this is a common lab core form. And it doesn't tell you a whole lot just looking at it, but what I did a few years ago was color coded. And if you new doctors uh, new to me, I color code it such that you see blue means code blue. That's the worst. Uh, code blue in a hospital setting means extreme or crisis, and so that's what we have here, a crisis at these areas that are code blue. Red is danger, and yellow is warning. Anything that's red or blue will show up as clinical on your lab core form. The problem with the lab core form is it doesn't delineate whether an extreme value is there or a high value, they're all just over on the side. So with our test, we can easily see where the worst problems are, and we can highlight here just very, very easily, uh, very easily see. And so not only can I see the problem, my patients can see the problem. And one thing about the computer system, I'll show you a little bit, it'll compare two tests side by side. So here's the first one, here's the second one, just looking at the colors, you can see the patient improved. You see a green smile face means the value improved. It may not be perfect yet, but it's going in the right direction. And so those are some of the things that we do. A lot of people are taking supplements, and so we want to be there to help that need for people who are taking supplements. But here's really where the highlight, or one of the main focuses of this lecture is right here. And comparing the old values, like I said, I've been in practice over 30 years. These values, the old ones, are from like around 30 years ago. The new ones are more recent, maybe within the last five years, but don't panic or, um, or be too concerned. If these are not exactly what LabCorp or Quest are today, because these changes might vary one or two points here or there, but I do want to show you some of the key ones that I think are especially um, interesting in what they've done. Now, if it's a good change on the new values, I put it in green. But the bad change, I put it in red. So, starting off the top, glucose. Okay, they keep tightening that up, playing with it, that, and the A1C. In my opinion, you get more people on medication. And by tightening up the A1C values, it gets, oh my gosh, several million more people on medication. Rather than correcting the problem, it justifies putting them on medication. But let's go on down here. we got uric acid. And you know how uric acid is gout. And so it went from 8 to 8.2.
And, and that's not, it's not terrible, but it's not good either. Now here's one I think is some, some very bad. The BUN, blood your nitrogen, was at 10 to 20. It's now it's down to 5 to 26. Now what's a low BUN indicate? Low blood urine nitrogen indicates what? Liver disease, liver problems. And now that's pretty important. It's not showing until it's more advanced, but what does a high BUN indicate? This is more critical. A high blood urine nitrogen indicates what? Kidney disease. And so a value of 20, or if a patient had a, a value of 21 or 22 or even 25, it would have been diagnosed and treated medically, but now it's not treated until it's 26. Now suppose you get a veteran doctor who's been around like a guy and he knows blood work and he a patient comes in with a 25 BUN. And a doctor knows that that's right on the edge of clinical. Can that doctor treat it at 26? Well, no, he can't because he's got to follow the standard of care. And the standard of care, he's got to justify his treatment to the insurance company and people looking over his shoulder who says it's 26. And so the kidneys have to be what? 25 to 30 percent worse now before it's diagnosed. Truly, kidney disease has to be more advanced before it's diagnosed medically. And this is where learning about these things is going to help you. Because I'm going to show you a tool that we use that's going to help identify these, these problems before they get clinical or before waiting until it's 26. We're going to find these problems before it gets that bad. And uh, there are some other ones on here. The sodium, just minor changes there. And um, you can look at that. Now, let me ask you something. I think people in your community might like to know this, that things are changing. And um, we could go into great detail on these, but I'm going to hit some, some of the highlights, what I think the most important ones are. Um, the alkaline phosphatase can indicate metastasis. It can indicate arthritis. Um, and it went from 138 up to 150. Now, if it's low, it can indicate a zinc, magnesium deficiency along that line, vitamins, a zinc, magnesium, vitamin C deficiency with the low alkaline phos. And again, they're not diagnosing it now until it drops from 41 to 25. But on the high end is where I think it's, it's more important. And I mean, they're both important. We want to optimize the body. But a high alkaline phos, it's not diagnostic, but it does tell you something's going on. This would be, could indicate bone metastasis. Bone metastasis, when, when cancer affects bones, the alkaline fossil go up. Now, now just to um, refresh you, children will tend to have a high alkaline fossil when? Children will tend to have a high alkaline fossil when they are growing. So if you happen to have a child who doesn't appear to be thriving, do a blood test on them. If they've got a low alkaline fossil, you know they're not going to be growing because there's something else going on. Conversely, if you see a high alkaline phos, you can let that parent know your child is ready for a growth, growth spurt. And they're probably in one right now. And so there are some things you can look at. But I want to, I know I got carried away there. The alkaline phos went from 138 to 150. Now the LDA, lactodehydrogenase, indicates tissue breakdown. And it went from 225 up to 250. Now you notice that these are not zero because the body's always breaking down and repairing. So you do need some, but you don't want too much. Again, this can be an indicator of cancer. It's not specific tissue breakdown. You don't know where it is. You just know something bad is going on. And so it's an indicator of overall health. Okay, moving on. Now here's a couple that just happened recently that have really shot up a lot. The SGOT went from 40. Now, oh, by the way, these are liver enzymes here. GGT is generally known as a pancreatic enzyme, but SGOT and SCPT are liver enzymes. And when they're high, they generally indicate liver disease, hepatitis, um, or inflammation, infection, something along that line. And look at the ranges. It used to be 0 to 40 for the SGOT, and now it's up to 56. Wow, that's huge. And look at this one. The SGP team went from 47 all the way up to 72. That's at least a 50% higher number now that's considered normal. So you got to think, why are these now considered normal? When 30 years ago, this was normal. 
Well, it's an indication of our population, isn't it? People are, are people sicker than ever before with all the drugs and everything else they're doing? Of course they are. And so because this is common, because it's average and common, it's considered normal and healthy. This is bad. This is very bad. And so that's why we've got to be better doctors and identify these things and catch them before they get clinical because now it's like clinical is falling off a cliff. And you've got no reserves. Once you fall off a cliff, you're done. So anyway, this is very important. And we've got um, some other, other ones in here. Uh, the uh, ferritin, excuse me. The ferritin went from 291 up to 322. High ferritin um, is an acute phase reactant. Can indicate, generally, it's most known as an indicator of hemochromatosis, an iron handling problem. And there are lots of complications associated, a lot of chronic things associated with high ferritin from high blood pressure, high cholesterol, chronic fatigue, prostate problems, um, even cancers, many mysterious things that people develop. And this is, uh, I know I'm getting carried off, but uh, women don't tend to get this until they reach menopause. So anyway, beware the ferritin is now higher than ever before for them to diagnose it. Cholesterol is interesting. Now I've got, I've got a note here, but I don't have it uh, actually identified. There are some cholesterols from, from not LabCorp or Quest, but I see labs from all over the country, and there are some labs that have a normal total cholesterol value of 0 to, to 140. 0 to 140. There are some facilities that believe that you can never have a cholesterol that's too low. Well, we all know how important cholesterol is to the body. And um, uh, I, I think it's important to uh, have, in fact, I think it's actually pathological to have a cholesterol below 140. And I think 140 to 200 is a better range, but obviously it's more important to look at the HDL and all these other values here. So we're going to move on to that one, the glucose and the total cholesterol. They tightened up a little bit, and I believe that, uh, that is basically get more people on medication. Now, the thyroid values tend to all be lower before it's diagnosed, so be aware that thyroid values, uh, T4 and free T3, and I don't have them listed here, all tend to be lower before their diagnosis is low thyroid. And as bad as those are, the white count, I mean, this is astounding. The white count on the low end went from 4.8 down to 4.0, and that's like 20% worse. So white count has to be about 20% worse for it to be identified medically. Now, what does a low white count indicate? Depressed immune system, bone marrow depression, um, a chronic infection, chronic something is going on, and that's bad. And as bad as that one is, look at the red count. The red count went from 4.5 all the way down to 3.8. This means that 3.81 is considered normal, where a few years ago, that would be pathological, probably advanced anemia. So now advanced anemia is considered normal because it's so common. Do you see why this is so important that we understand um, and read blood work properly? And uh, but hey, you, the people in your community you know it's in the, the um, uh, well, you see the other values have changed too, but the most important ones are that white count and red blood count. We got some more coming up here that are just as dramatic. And you can go through and look at this at the rest of CBC, but I want to hit this set rate right here. Erythrocyte sedimentation rate. If you can get your hands on a blood test from 30 years ago, you're going to find a set rate normal range of 0 to 9. Today, the normal range is 0 up to 30. In fact, I've seen labs where a normal set rate, erythrocyte sedimentation rate that indicates inflammation for a middle-aged female was 0 to 48. As long as a female had a, a that set rate below 48, it was considered okay. It's considered normal. And I've seen males from some labs with a normal set rate value for middle-aged male of below 35. As long as they're uh, below 35, it's normal. Well, what is that telling us? That the population is overall what? Severely inflamed. So you get a blood test in, and uh, the patient says, well, the doctor couldn't find anything wrong. You see a set rate of 25. I tell him, you know, years ago, 9 was the range, and now, and now because it's common, 
it's considered normal and accepted as healthy this is really an indication of how inflamed our society, our culture, our country is, isn't it? And so this is horrible. And as bad as that one is, we got a worse one coming up here. Um, and there's another one after this, after this slide. But a CEA is a chorionic embryonic antigen. It's a cancer marker. And the range used to be 3.0, below 3.0. Now the range is less than 4.7. Look how much it went up, 20%, 30%. It jumped that much now. And uh, because these numbers are higher, do people have cancer higher levels than ever before? Well, now they're letting it go until it's more advanced. If you happen to be a smoker, your CEA, heck with you, up to 5.6 is considered normal. Wow. Okay. Now, there's another test that I've talked about before, or I've lectured about before. I don't know if you guys have heard it, but there's a test called the BNP. And a BNP, and I won't go into great detail here, I'll, I'll talk about it um, uh, at the lecture at the uh, homecoming. But the BNP is a useful marker of cardiovascular risk, given that people have no clinical evidence of this cardiovascular disease. The levels of BNP predict risk for heart failure, first cardiovascular events, AFib, and stroke or transient ischemic attack. I've got to tell you, everybody you know ought to be having this test done. Every adult you know ought to have this test done because this predicts death when everything else looks fine. The levels of BMP predict the risk of heart failure. So with that in mind, the BMP test predicts death when everything looks great. A lot of references to it. Here is the thing that is astounding, truly astounding. LabCorp, if you look down here, has a normal BMP range of 0 to 100. That's what LabCorp says is normal now. My SBN range, science-based nutrition range, I want you to be less than 40. To be healthy, I want you to be less than 40. Now, if I have time, I'm going to show you my blood test. And because um, I, I do a blood test twice a year, comprehensive, thorough evaluation. Now, I'll show you mine, and I'll show you mine, I'm 57 years of age. So I'm going to show you mine, but LabCorp says under 100. I want you to be SBN under 40. Now here's an Apex Clinical Lab, Apex Clinical Lab laboratories. Here are their ranges for BNP. Now remember, under 100 is LabCorp. If you're over, if you're as long as you're under 45, they jumped it up to 125. 45 to 54, 138. 55 to 64. Now I'm in this age group right here. I'm 57. Going on 58. So 177 is what they say. As long as I'm below 177, that's normal. 65 to 74, up to 229, if you're over 75, heck with you, 852. What does this reflect? This isn't showing how healthy people are. This is just a reflection of how sick people are and how sick our population are. And it's basically saying if you get old, you're supposed to, your heart's supposed to poop out on you. It's supposed to be getting old and sick, so it'll die. And that's what that 852 is a reflection of, how much stress is on the heart and how quickly, you, how close you are to dying. And so it just is amazes me. LabCorp sticks at 100. Now, all, although I got to tell you, LabCorp is changing almost all their values to age-based values. And part of our computer system is we have to enter in all the ages. It takes a lot of work on our part, but at least we got everything the way it should be. But all these ranges here are based on ages. And LabCorp will probably do the same thing too, but they're not there yet. But Apex is, and they found that these are the averages for these ages. Pretty scary. So if a medical doctor does this test, and he sees you're 75, you got an 8, 850, no, you're fine. This is, this is terrible. And your people ought to know this. And you doctors ought to know this too, and get yourself tested and see what's going on. How important is it? Just a quick case here. 57-year-old patient of mine. He didn't follow my advice. He presented with kidney problems. Kind of, he said he didn't have time to follow the program. So he traveled a lot, and he called me and he was in text and texted, hey, my ankles are swelling. Sometimes the ankle swelling comes and goes. and never goes away all the time, but some days it's real bad. I ordered a comprehensive blood test. I'll show you the comprehensive blood test here in a minute. And the BNP. Now, the BNP, when I got the results back, was 1,489, which is the highest I'd ever seen at that point. But by the time I, I sent him out for the blood test and got the results back, he went to his medical doctor. 
His medical doctor looked at his ankles, said he's got fluid retention, and prescribed a water pill, hydrochlorothiazide, to reduce the fluid. All the MD did was check his blood pressure, didn't do anything else. So when I called him with these results and said, you are a walking heart attack, well, first of all, there, you'll be amazed how many medical doctors don't know about this test. They don't know what it means or anything. But um, I told the patient he's a walking heart attack, and I told him he could drop dead any minute. Now, here you got a chiropractor saying you could drop dead, and a medical doctor saying, oh, it's just fluid retention. Which one do you want? Well, the patient blew me off, and they decided to go as his medical doctor. You know what happened a week later? Drop dead. That's exactly right. How you feel, once again, I'm going to tell you, this is no indication of how healthy you are. The heart was under severe stress. He didn't have any pain in the heart. So anyway, that's how important that test is. And um, okay, now, and I know this slide is messy and probably confusing. But what I try to show here is these are two different labs. On This is the old labs. If you would take, um, you know, 30 years ago, the ranges, and here's like LabCorp and here's Quest. And the thing is, years ago, you'd see a lot more red, maybe blue and things like that. But things that are red today, will, um, things that are yellow today would very well have been red a few years ago. So don't ignore the yellow. The yellow is the areas that aren't clinical, but they're not healthy either. Like I said, if the clinical range is 10 to 50, we'll pick the middle range, the middle 50%, that would be 20 to 40. And now in that 20 to 40, we'd say that those are healthy ranges, which would be white. That 10 to 20 range and 40 to 50 range would be yellow. Now, so you have to pay more attention to the yellow because truly, honestly, things that are yellow today would have been clinical or even critical a few years ago. And um, now, here's just highlighting in one lab, um, old values, new values. Doesn't look like a lot is wrong, but if you could analyze from years ago, it would be. The thing about the ranges that have occurred, and I hope you understand this point, because it has to do with the computerized system. Just because the country in LabCorp and other labs have changed the normal range of a blood test from 10 to 50 down to 5 or up to 65, we did not correspondingly change our optimal health values. So we want you to be just as healthy today as we would have wanted you to be 30 years ago. So understand, if you try and calculate out these healthy ranges and things like that, it's not going to calculate because some values went up 70 points, but we're still keeping our 20 to 40 range. Some may have only dropped down to 8 or maybe down to 2. And so the clinical range is shifting all over the place, up and down, a couple points this month, uh, half a point next month, all over but we are maintaining our optimal range as absolutely much as possible. So, if you, again, if you try and calculate it out, you're not going to get a nice, easy, calculated number. I want you to understand the concept. I'm using healthy ranges from 30 years ago because I don't think it's a good thing what they're doing with the clinical range. So, uh, and you guys might have questions on this afterwards. The beauty of a system, like I'm showing you, is that it easily highlights where patients' problems are. Um, to have a computer system that puts it, color codes it, and tells you the severe areas to look at first. Because on your lab core form, anything that's red or blue would show up in the same column. But now with it being color coded, it can really point you in the direction of, oh my gosh, we got some severe problems here. And this patient had advanced leukemia, but he had no symptoms. All he had was indigestion. The doctor did a blood test and found, wow, advanced leukemia. Fortunately, a doctor did a test on them. Now, the critical ranges, um, you got red, yellow, and blue. Where do the critical ranges come in? Well, when I, when I put this together, um, this computer program together, I used about three or four different laboratory textbooks, as, as well as the, a lot of the stuff I get is from labcorp.com. LabCorp.com has all these tests in and tremendous information for you to go and read about these tests yourself. But a lot of the information I get is from there. And the, 
these critical values, the clinical, this is the clinical value here, 65 to 99 is between yellow and red. And so um, if you go down here to uh, uric acid, the clinical range is 2.4 to 8.2. Our healthy range is 4 to 6. And so between 6 and 8.2, it's yellow. Between 4 and down to 2.4, it's yellow. And then we got the clinical range. And then well, here's the critical range. Now, the critical range is, I got to tell you, nobody agreed on what the critical critical ranges are. And um, uh, LabCorp and Quest, they would be different. Uh, other labs, even lab cores around different parts of the nation are going to have a little different value, maybe a point here, a point there. So don't obsess about these, the critical values. Just understand the concept. Now, here's some else that will drive you nuts because it drives me nuts. Lab core will send us out notices that the lab ranges have changed, but they don't go and change it on their website. Every test here, you can go in and find on the website, and we'll get notes, emails that something that a val clinical value has changed, but they haven't gone in and changed it in the LabCorp um, site about these ranges. So understand, we do the best we can. Um, it's, it takes a fair amount of work to keep it up to date, but we do. Uh, we do just to understand there may be some discrepancies from what LabCorp has on their website versus on their form but we try to keep it as consistent as possible. So we've got these ones listed here. I want to show you our standard panel. This is what everybody starts with. This is the uh, Merkel panel. Um, I'm Dr. Merkel. I developed this. I put this together about almost 30 years ago. I would change it if I could today. I would. Um, this would this, to level my knowledge, this is why I put together 30 years ago. It's pretty darn good. I would modify it if I could, but I can't modify it or I lose the tremendous discount that we get with LabCorp on this. I'm going to share with that we with that in just a minute. But this is our standard blood test, and I and uh, um, basically very quickly the A1C glucose, A1C, kidney panel, electrolytes, minerals, comprehensive liver panel, serum iron and ferritin on everybody, uh, uh, lipid panel, uh, cholesterol excuse me, uh, thyroid and TSH, CV skin differential, uh, set rate, CRP and CK, um, and vitamin D. Everybody starts with that. And um, now the vitamin D is not, has to be checked on the panel because the panel did not include the vitamin D when we first developed it. So if you doctors work with us, you'll notice that when you get those panels, the vitamin D is checked. And I think that vitamin D is, uh, that vitamin D by itself, it generally runs about $200. In fact, this panel not unusual. We've seen uh, in, in my area, a patient had it done at a hospital where instead of going through LabCorp, it's nearly $5,000 for this blood test. Another patient thought I was, thought I was uh, um, ripping her off or something, so she had it done. Um, it cost over $1,800 to get this test done. Everybody know doctors this year, before they came to my lecture, get this done. We had one doctor have a $350 copay on top of uh, copay, he had to pay out of pocket, which means that the lab cost about $2,500 to $3,000. And so keep that number in mind as we, as we go on how expensive this is and how expensive it can be. We're going to show you um, why we've teamed up with uh, Dr. Brimhall and uh, why he's um, getting this out to the doctors he works with. And uh, we're, we're talking a little bit about the the blood test, the, the, how the reporting system works, and there's a lot of testing to be done, and I'm not going to go over this in great detail. I want to make sure we get to all the details we need to, as well as take questions afterwards. I want to get to the report, and um, uh, this is the computerized report. I want to show you how you can get involved with it, but this is the thing that has made my life easier over the years. And uh, I'm going to actually pull up the uh, SAMP report on how it's going to come to you when you, um, when you get it. So let's see. Um, here it is. Here's the SAMP report. And actually, when you guys sign up with Science Based Nutrition, you'll get this with your name on it, and that will be real nice. But it'll be almost this exact same report. So I hope that you guys can see my full screen here. And, uh, but this is um, obviously you'd have your own information here. 
this is all computer generated. There is some data entry you have to do and uh, patient information. Now, this patient information, you go online and, and start a patient file. And I always tell people, if you, can, if you can buy stuff online, you can easily do the data entry on this. And you see it's pretty easy to do. And uh, maybe Dr. Bermall will mention a little bit about that. Yeah, the vitals. You have to have the vitals because the vitamin and uh, diagnosis is based on or takes into consideration their age, sex, and weight. Okay, so we're going to have that. The primary symptoms this is what they presented with. And we do have a patient symptom survey that they've checked off, problems that they've got, and that's what we see here. And they've got a lot of problems. Patient comments. Now, here's where you type in your own things that you want. In fact, if you want to cut and paste three or four, ten pages in there, you can cut and paste as much as you want of what the patient said they got going on. If you want to put your exam findings or other things in here, you can put as much as you want in the report. And uh, I'm just showing you a small part here. But you can cut and paste as much as you want in here. The primary findings, these are diagnostic findings. What actually showed up on the test findings. And, um, and so you'll see thyroid problems. Anyway, we're going to go through right here in a second. We got a disclaimer here. Persistent nutrition lifestyle programs are in an optimal environment which your body can heal and repair itself. Uh, it's cheap by eliminating foods and toxins. You can read the rest of that. Now, here's something very interesting, very good we do is list the medications you're on and how long they've been on them. Occasionally, six months to two years, etc. Now, now, if you look real close, right here is another little disclaimer. And this says the information in this report has not been evaluated by the FDA. It is not intended to treat, cure, prevent any disease. That is on every page of this report. Now, let's go into the medications, okay? Now, it lists all the side effects, like the patient on Lipitor. It lists all the side effects of that drug. Not only that, look at this. We list all the nutrients that are depleted by taking that medication. Wow, that usually blows people away because is anybody telling about the side effects of medications? Look at Prilosec. Here's Prilosec, which I know you guys have a ton of patients on. Here's side effects. Look at that. Just read through those. I mean, that is amazing that people take that stuff and, and uh, they, don't under, they don't know the side effects of it. Look at all the side effects and then look at the nutrient depletions that's caused by that. By that one drug, it's this. So, I don't I hope you guys understand how comprehensive this computerized system is. I'm showing you that we go in, find the side effects and the nutrient depletions. It takes my staff a fair amount of time to keep this up to date. Keep it up to date and do that. And um, uh, I know Dr. Brimhall knows um, Kelly works for us. She's one of the main people that has put this in and formatted it in this way, and it is looks beautiful, if I might say so. And Zetia, another one for cholesterol. Look at all the side effects and look at all the nutrient depletions. Is it any wonder people are sick? And you know how much this shocks people seeing what this does when they see the meds are on? Because nobody else is giving them this information. Okay, this talks about red, yellow, and blue um, uh, type thing, and you guys can read through that. The one thing we try to do is have consistent verbiage. Now, these reports are very specific. And this patient had low chloride. Now, if the chloride is low, what color will that be on the report? That will be red. And calcium protein out and globulin a little low, that will be yellow. And so it goes and explains in detail exactly what this patient has. Now, the patient also has other lab findings that could be associated with intestinal problems like low albumin, high liver enzyme, and low blood serum iron. Patient takes these medications that directly cause gastrointestinal dysfunction. Wow. Oh, look at these nutrients here. You guys recognize, rec, uh, recognize these nutrients here? These are zymogen products that, are, that have been selected for this level of problem. Um, these are nutrients that are recommended for this problem. The dosage is going to be later in the report. But these are nutrients. This prints out. Well, you probably already know all the Zymogen um, products in here. So anyway, it goes through each one like that. Don't have time to read through the whole thing. Um, there will be a sample report that uh, you can download. I know Dr. Brimhall has one on his website you can download. And uh, all we go through the whole report. Don't have time to go through the whole thing. 
in detail, goes through the hair test. We do blood and hair. We do chelation. I did a, a, um, a, um, I've done several webinars on chelation. So I'm just going to zip through this, and you'll be able to review it yourself. Uh, there are some dietary recommendations and things uh, that we've got in here I want to show you. Um, here's the actual test results again, and you can see the prior test result. It can compare any two tests that are in the system. It automatically defaults to the most recent one. If you did a blood test, it'll default to the most recent one. And it does a comparative like I showed you. And then um, I tell you, your patient will love this because they can understand this blood work. And then it lists another six on the back. And then the hair is the same format. See, they may not have done a complete blood test, but it still is listed on the back. And then the hair test, same format, um, previous and comparative values in through here, very nice. Then it lists the vitamins that this patient needs. Now, I know you're not seeing the whole list on here, but I'll just leave it here for a second. And the vitamins are based on sex, age, weight, and severity of condition. That means if you've got some serious critical problems, some of these values may have a, a, um, a multiplier, where instead of one, it'll recommend two. Instead of two, it might recommend four, four that type of thing. Now, I've got to be honest with you, this is where the Zymogen line in here is what um, Dr. John and Dr. Dr. John Brimhall and Dr. Brett Brimhall um, have put together um, for the Zymogen line, so it prints out a beautiful program. And they help with dosages and everything else to correlate uh, with uh, the Zymogen products along with what we do. So everything is right there. I think you'll recognize that name. You might think, well, that's a lot of stuff. Okay. Now realize that this is for hair testing, toxic elements too. So when you see four, that's four drops. Liquid, that's probably five drops. And so I think it counted up. This is like 21 pills and several drops. So that's not a lot of pills. 21 at 7 in the morning, noon in the evening. And then the drops, you know, that, that's easy to do too. So that's not a lot of pills. But look how many pills. I mean, this patient had some health problems. It's a sample patient. We did it to, to show the ability of the program, uh, but it can be modified. Okay, so um, that's that report. Now, um, I know I've got my report here that, I could, that, that I'd like to go over if we have time, but I want to go over a little bit about, um, about science-based nutrition. Okay, um, first of all, the report... I usually tell people how to go over the report, and I'm running a little short on time. I'm not going to go over details on, on how to go over the report, but these are some things that you'll be able to, when you rewatch it, you'll be able to get review this, see some things, or, or get some further training at the um, homecoming that we've got. Face symptom survey, we have that. Again, um, you can get that at, at the, uh, Dr. Brimhall's website. And again, this is just, uh, just going through it quickly here. Because I want to get through this. Why use computerized system? And uh, Dr. John has been uh, working with us for a couple years now. And Dr. Brett Brimhall, uh, he's been with us, I think, six or seven years. And um, uh, he's, uh, they both have been taking care of, of uh, like he always did, some very serious cases. And now they've got great documentation. And, uh, but why use computer program? Because you can't remember everything. And I can't either. That's why I created the program. Computerized system, computer doesn't forget. It takes a lot of time to do it by hand. You have state-of-the-art reports, you go better compliance, you have backup for tough cases. So you're not out there alone. Now, I've been doing this for over 30 years, and I've got um, cases of all sorts and documentation of the results we've gotten. I've had several cases uh, published um, in the different chiropractic journals, and uh, so they're there out there to help you, and we're here to help you. Um, with your with your practice and, and patients. And it's patented. There are two patents on this. So it's a central server-based system. No software or hardware compatibility issues. Easily upgraded. And uh, it's built for research. Reports you can be proud of and a confidence in for anyone to see. You have backup for tough cases. And uh, with being central server-based, and we make changes to, to LabCorp, or we add, we add new medications almost every week. Um, it's automatically done for everybody. It'd be insane to try and download a computer program on your computer because there would be all kinds of chaos. So it's cloud-based technology, works beautifully, 
handles any number of tests, labs. Um, you provide your own account, or you can get your testing done through science-based nutrition, which I'd recommend and you do for the better pricing. And also, if you use the lab core forms through science-based nutrition or Quest, these, those results are automatically sent in to SBN so you have you don't have that data entry to worry about. You don't have, you don't have data entry error. LabCorp directly connects with science-based nutrition. Doctors Data does, and so does Quest, if you use our requisition forms. How much is it going to cost to do this? Now, that panel I showed you without the vitamin D, um, the vitamin D, I think, is like 20 bucks. Um, so you might add $20 to that. So uh, if you buy one panel at a time, they're $153, but a lot of doctors buy 20 panels at a time, so when you have patients come in, boom, go right to the lab. They're already paid for, ready to go. So the best price is $91 each. A hair test, you get discount price for those, $45. So $91 and $45, $136, let's, let's throw in vitamin D. I, I don't remember. I don't think vitamin D is included on that. Let's say $150, $155 is your cost per patient to get tested. That is your out-of-pocket cost, $155. Okay. Maybe 150 for easy math, all right? Um, now, if you're in New Jersey, New York, Rhode Island, I'm not going to go over that. Call our office. Things a little bit different for those three states. How much do you charge? Suppose your cost is 150 We have doctors that charge $300 for that. Um, we have one doctor I'm aware of, the highest, charges $1,200 for it. Now, when you consider that medically the cost of a blood test, the blood test itself could be $5, in fact, I don't know if you've read the, uh, some of the internet things lately, but there are some, some blood tests we do that cost $10. That $10 cost, there are some hospitals charging over $10,000 for that test. I'm not joking. That, that was actually, I actually reported that on my radio show. It's document. I, I don't have the documentation right in front of me. It just came to me. Uh, but it's incredible how much these things are, are charged. So if you charge $1,200, still a bargain. We charge 550. Our cost is 150, 155. We charge 550, and um, so our patient cost is 153, and uh, so 550 minus 153, we made 397. We haven't even sold any vitamins yet. Suppose you make some money on vitamins, you should net. We generally estimate we're going to make a minimum of 500 dollars for every new patient profit that we make, and depending on how much vitamins you sell, how much you uh, and, and what you sell them for. So suppose you only set up five hundred dollars. You only do four hundred twenty dollars a month. If you if you can do, let's say uh, four patients a week, you're going to make about eighty five grand a year, and you're going to work maybe what um, eight hours a week doing that. And so um, uh, really, if you only see three patients a week, nutrition like I'm showing you, three patients you're going to do about seventy grand a year working eight to two hours a week. I tell you, this is the easiest type of practice I've ever seen. And um, uh, I'm not saying you're going to make a million dollars, even though we do have a million dollar practice every year. How long can you work eight to 12 hours a week doing 70 grand? That's a nice retirement income, isn't it? 70 grand a year, better than Medicare, or uh, better than Social Security. So uh, why retire? And I believe I can do the type of work I'm doing, nutritional consults, forever. We do a lot of long distance, too. And uh, with this type of work, lab work, everybody accepts it. Everybody knows what it means. And that's a gold standard. And so we do a lot of long-distance work with patients because they all understand the blood work. You know, the patient's data online and transmit to uh, SBN headquarters. And uh, I'm not going to go over all these details. I want to show you the, the, the more important things. How much does it cost? $79 a month. And, and you get all these things, the color-coded reports you've seen, get patient processing, your office documents, office forms. We got meal plans, recipes. We got all kinds of stuff to help you get going. We got online training videos uh, that goes through every step of the way. And uh, if you're a little clumsy with computers, just watch these videos. They're about uh, anywhere from five to seven minutes and long, and they will get you going on everything you need to know. Most of the time, the, uh, the doctor's office that work with us don't even need to talk to our staff because we've got all the training online. Now, I know you guys, some of you people might be out on the West Coast, we're on Eastern Standard Time, so three-hour difference can be, can, can, could be an issue, but really the online training and, and the support system we've got, uh, it works very well. 
We got all kinds of marketing. We want you guys to get going. Now, one time enrollment fee is six hundred forty nine dollars. That's all costs get up and running, and you get all the marketing and all the things that you've seen. Uh, we do have a special marketing portal, which I'll show you, but we do have some, some basic marketing to get started with, and uh, you probably have a number of patients already to get started to get going. And uh, the membership plan is zero to 20 reports is $79 a month, and most of the doctors are at the 20 report level, $79 a month, and uh, that works out to $3.95 a report now. Each report, if you were to do it by hand, it would take you well over an hour. Um, generally, closer to two or three hours to do a thorough report is what you get with this. So, how much do you report? We do have some doctors that are at the 40 and a couple at the 60 report level, and uh, but they're doing very high volume, and uh, it is it works very well. So, all it is 12 month commitments are required. So, if you calculate that out, it's like I don't know, $1,400 or $1,500 is your sole commitment. And in, in, in three patients, you don't have that to return back to you, really. So uh, um, uh, there's an advanced e-marketing service, and um, basically, if you um, if you sign up, generally within the first week um, of of this webinar, we'll let you basically the e-marketing. Um, you get the first three months where you don't pay the seven hundred dollars a month and unlimited reports for three months. So you pay the enroll one-time enrollment fee and then just uh, that's it for three months. And so for three months you get to use it uh, without um, the limit of 20 reports because we want you to have all your patients bring in their, their most recent report and run, a, and run it through the analysis and uh, get started that way. So that's the way that we do have an optional uh, marketing portal. If you want to really get into it and start doing lay lectures, we have lay lectures available. And we do have a phone support option. If you want us to go over everything and you need a lot of hand-holding, we'll do it for you. And uh, the cost for this program is only $649 to get involved. And I got to tell you, um, Brett Brimhall, years ago, when he signed up, he probably paid close to, to 2500 to 3000 because it included all of this stuff. Well, now that we've got technology, and videos online, doc, some doctors don't need that support. They get how to go and do data entry online, they watch a few videos, and it saves them $900 or $1,000. And so if you watch some videos, it'll save some money. If you want us to hold your hand and go through it, we will do that, but it's, there, there will be a cost involved in that. We are efficient, and uh, we've got great support. Um, so anyway, it works very well. Okay. And uh, we got an additional a bonus you sign up. Now, we always recommend you go through the uh, program first, sign, sign yourself up first uh, so you can see what's going on. And we got all kinds of um, uh, people who's done this. And here's a doctor who had been doing it for four years. And after four years of doing science-based nutrition practice, he says he's scheduled two months out for new nutrition patients. And I don't even advertise that side of my office. Now, he's got a great system going, and he is doing phenomenal work. And uh, here's another one I'm putting up here. You guys can read through that later. And if you guys don't mind, I want to show you um, just uh, very briefly um, my blood work to show you an example of all the testing. Now, this isn't by any means all the testing, but just give you an idea of the testing that is already in our computerized system. Now, this is me. I get mine done about twice a year. I do for another one. Let's see, oh, my blood was 616. Okay. Now, generally, the, the blood that we do is five tubes of blood. Generally, my, when I get mine done, they generally draw close to 20 tubes of blood. The highest was 36 tubes of blood. Um, but here, this first page is our standard panel, and this is my blood test then. And uh, now, just to show you, um, it's not part of our standard panel, but if you want to do a more thorough thyroid evaluation, you can run all the the free T3, total T3, and the, the antibodies, and reverse T3, and those type of things. And there's also other thyroid values in there that, that aren't on here. These are just ones that I've run sometime over the last few years. you got your CBC and differential. And now we go into some other things, like uh, vitamin D levels. We've got different cancer markers. We've got serum aluminum, serum amylase. We've got APOA1 and AB. That has to do with cholesterol. There's a the blood arsenic, the BNP. Oh, remember the BNP I told you? We're at 
my age of 57, they say as long as you're under 177, you're okay, and you're 57, mine's at 2.5. Now, it was 11.4, 2.5, this is one of the lowest I've ever seen. In fact, I don't, I don't think I've seen anybody. I mean, I'd like to test my girls, 13 and 15 year old girls, see if theirs are this low. But that is a very low, very good BNP. So BNP indicates stress on the heart. So there is 177 versus 2.5. I'll take 2.5 any day. And you see other values in through here. We've got all these different. Um, I just want to go slowly here so you can get a, a, an idea of how thorough this computer system is. Um, it's got your NMR, your, if you want to do your lipid panels, your FAP, those type of things. Tumor necrosis factor. Uh, um, it's got, uh, well, anyway, all kinds of different blood tests in here. I know I'm, I'm trying to make you crazy looking at that. There's a little delay, I know, in, in getting it. But I just want to show you, you can do serum vitamin C and B6 and B12 and those type of things if you want. So it just gives you an idea of how thorough this evaluation is. And it goes on through. And I apologize, that's probably tran transmitting a little slow and driving you crazy. The hair testing, same thing. And then if I go down and look at the final vitamin list on a, on a pretty darn healthy person, notice my list is less than that sample report. The sample report, we had some things in just to make it look worse. And uh, here's what my vitamin list would be. And that's a pretty normal vitamin list, and it's probably pretty close to what I take right now. So anyway, that's, uh, that's my report. To give you an idea of what we can do, and so hopefully this, this 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 webinar today gave you some good information on what's happening in the world of lab testing, and I honestly believe it's impossible for anybody to keep up with what's happening in the laboratory field without a computer, without a computerized system. Just like how many of you people know your phone numbers, um, know ten phone numbers of your family and friends. Nobody does because we'll have a computerized phone. You can't remember all these labs either. So that's, that's, um, that's my presentation. And I'm going to turn it back over to Dr. Brimhall. Dr. John, I'd like to thank you for having me on today and Zymogen for sponsoring this. And uh, I'm ready for any questions if there are any. And, um, well, I assume we're still out there. Um, Dr. Brimhall? Well, I can always go back and show you my, uh, my lab test while he's, while he's waiting to, uh, to come back, or Zymogen wants to come back. And uh, Dr. Brimhall or Zymogen, anytime you want to break in, go ahead. Um, but just to review um, my testing, I've been doing nutritional work for a long time, and I do DMSA. Uh, oral chelation, and if you look back, I've been doing uh, longer than 313, but I've been doing a lot of chelation, and even though I do a lot of vitamin things, they're in our environment, and I'm still being exposed to high levels of lead and mercury and aluminum, so fortunately, I take DMSA to get it out of my system on a regular basis. Um, vitamins, even though I'm taking vitamins, and I'm taking vitamin D, if you notice up here, I'm still a little low in vitamin D. Oh, that's the old test, um, or previous test. Um, let's see, vitamin D up here. I'm a little low in vitamin D, even though I take about 5,000 nice units a day. And so I need to kick that up a little bit. Um, uh, there are some, the BNP I already mentioned, the C-peptide. Um, now, C-peptide is di diabetes, and that's low, so my risk of diabetes is, is probably low. Um, the C-125, that can be a tumor marker. But it's right at the edge, so I'm not too worried about that. Um, DHT, if somebody could find a way to lower DHT normally, they'd be a millionaire, a multimillionaire very quickly. DHT, what's that a test of? Well, if for mid DHT is the higher the DHT, the less hair they have generally. And uh, generally the only way they lower DHT is to give some weight estrogen. And it's usually the high estrogen that increases hair growth but affects the liver and everything else. So um, uh, I always keep trying to lower that, that DHT, uh, but I do have the, uh, my dad had it, my brothers and things like that. I'm fighting it. I'm trying to fight it naturally. It did come down. If I can get it to come down, you know, another 50 or 60 points, 
I'd be anxious to see or curious to see what would happen in my ear as long as I did it completely naturally. So anyway, um, uh, there's some, some things. Now I know you're thinking, wow, he does a lot of tests. I gotta tell you, there are patients who are, who are going to look at what you're doing. And I have patients say, gee, I wanna do what you're doing, Mercury, you look pretty healthy. Don't have a lot of hair, but you look pretty healthy for 57. And so I wanna do what you do. And so I tell them, well, I do a lot of testing. I don't have to do all of them, but they might run two, you know, two thousand dollars worth of tests. They might run double instead of five tubes of blood. They might run, you know, eight or ten because they want, a, they they want some of the things that I do. Check the cancer markers. Check, uh, uh, you might check CoQ10 levels or vitamin C levels or, or B12 or or check the serum levels of things. So there are a lot of things that people want to know. They just don't know it's available. And the prices that they get, oh my gosh, for $150 you can get all that testing and then for a few hundred more, more testing, it's a tremendous bargain. And people my age fear growing old and disability like their grandparents and maybe parents are. So testing like this is pretty easy to convince people they need to do. So um, uh, I think we're about done. Dr. Brimhall or uh, anybody from Zymogen out there, you guys like Hi. to take over? Hi, Dr. Merkel. That was wonderful. It's Bettina Newman. My muscle had to leave. I'm sorry. Okay. You do have some questions that came in. I'd like to um, just throw them at you. Dr. Merkel, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Oh, there, finally. I, my speaker was not working there. I think we're ready to call quits. Uh, there's one thing that they need to do to get signed up for this, and that is just go to brimhall.com, or they can call Jason at 866-338-4883. Uh, we do have a special that Brimhall doctors get that nobody else does. That $639 or $49 is a little bit less. So call Jason tomorrow at 866-338-4883, or contact uh, Jason at brimhallwellness.com, and let's get you going on the... SBN Brimhall Advantage Program. Thank you so much, Dr. Merkel. You are welcome. Dr. Merkel. Forward to seeing everybody at home come. Humming as well. Talk to you soon. Over and out.